Hey everyone, Jared here, and we are back with another Shop Shorts video. And in today's video, I am going to show you how to check the runout in a drill chuck mounted to a drill press. And if you find your runout is too high, how to replace the drill chuck with something more accurate. So the reason we're doing this today is I do have runout in my drill press. When you chuck up a drill bit, you can actually see that drill bit wobble around a little bit. So the runout can come from one of three places. Number one, it can come from the drill chuck itself. It can come from the adapter that is pressed into the chuck, or it could come from the spindle. So in order to show you all of this, I have set up here a mag base, magnetic base, and a dial indicator. And we're gonna check run out and see where we are getting deflection and where the issue actually stands. All right, so what we are going to do first is I am going to try and get the dial indicator onto the spindle itself. Now here you can see at the top is the actual spindle. And then there's a little step ledge right there. That bottom section is the actual adapter that's part of the drill chuck. And if I spin this, you can see it all spin. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the dial indicator on the upper part, then we'll move it to the lower, and then we'll finally check the drill chuck itself. Okay, so we now that zeroed out, I'm now going to spin using the pulley in the top. It looks like we have less than two thou, maybe, maybe a thou and a half. And this is really difficult because my, my drill press is kind of wobbly, but Luckily, it's not deflecting the dial indicator since it is on a mag base directly to the drill press stand. Okay, so now we're going to move this down to the adapter section and see what we get there. And you can tell that I have, I have travel. And you don't need to zero that. You could just roughly, you can just remember where that needle is and just watch for fluctuation back and forth and measure it. But for the purposes of the video, I'm trying to zero it out just so it's easier for you to see. All right, I'm getting the same, getting probably just maybe a little under 2,000. So now we're going to move down to the chuck itself. Okay, I have about three thousandths. Now, what that only shows us though is what the outside is like, right? It doesn't tell us how the inside is machined or how the jaws are made. So we will now chuck up a drill bit and then we'll put the dial indicator on the drill bit. Okay, so we have a real nice made in the USA half inch drill bit. So I'm gonna leave a little bit of the shaft down so we have a smooth area for the dial indicator to ride. I want to get this to where it rides on the drill bit, but is not being interfered with by the chuck itself. We'll zero that. Now let's see what we get. 
Now you can see that is quite a bit more. We're getting probably about, looks like about 10 thou, going from a little over plus one there to negative nine and a half there. So maybe almost, gosh, almost two there. So probably about 11 and a half thou. Not all from the outside, but from the inside machining itself. So now I want to replace this and see if we can get this any better. And we'll use the same drill bit for that test as well. I'm going to remove our mag base dial indicator. Let's take the drill bit out. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to remove this. Now, your drill press may be different, but my drill press happens to be a MT2, a Morse taper number two. So I'm going to actually bring this down where I can get at this slot, and then I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. So inside this slot is the actual spindle that's turning. So that is solid steel right there. And it's going to open up. And there is the tab for the adapter. So we're going to use a little tool and tap in there and knock this guy out. So I have here a drift. And that's it. And here you can see the Morse taper adapter. And it's really difficult to see, but I could actually put a punch down in here and tap this adapter piece out. But I'm not doing that today because I bought a new one. So what I have here is I have a Win keyless chuck. And I have no idea if I'm going to like this or not. It's not a, a high dollar chuck, but I thought I would try something keyless just to see if I liked it. And one thing I did like about it is this goes up to five eighths, whereas my original chuck just went to half inch. Now, the problem I did have with this chuck, and even though this chuck is listed as a Morse taper number two, which it is theoretically, because this is a Morse taper, size number two. The problem is if I insert this in there, I don't have a tab that sticks up that allows me to knock it out. You can see here my original Morse taper number two has this little tab that allows me to knock it out. So I am not gonna use this piece of this new chuck. And for that, I have this adapter. Now the beauty of this is if you found a chuck you like, but it was only made in a certain style, you can buy an adapter for yours. But you have to pay attention to the size that's on the opposite end. This is called a B16 adapter. They also make them in a JT, a Jacobs taper. My original chuck is a Jacobs taper down in there. So that shaft would not have fit into this chuck anyways. So I bought this separate. This is out of Germany. It's high quality, should work good. Even if I decide this chuck is not worth it, I'll be keeping this and using it in a better higher dollar chuck. So 2-16 just means Morse taper two to a B16 adapter. So what we're going to do first, let's install this, put the dial indicator on this adapter itself first, then we'll go knock the Morse taper out of this and then come and install it, put the drill bit in here and check it. This is super simple. You put it in, it won't go until you turn it and get it just in the right spot. Just take, give it a little tap. Okay, now we have the adapter installed. Let's zero this.
roughly zeroed, spin the pulley. All right, minus half a thou. Is it really tracking? Yeah, it's moving. And let's make sure I'm not all the way out of travel with this and pull this away a little bit. That was looking awful good. All right, so that one thou, zero, not quite. I'm sorry, it was sitting at 99 thou. Zero, about one. This is not a high-end dial indicator, so it is what it is, but we are running probably two thou, maybe a little under for this, so that's pretty darn good. I'm gonna grab a Sharpie. We're gonna mark the high spot, just in case after we put the chuck on, we find that it increased. We may wanna pop that off and try to rotate a little bit and offset, so. We're going negative, that's a low side. All right, about there is max. So now let's put the chuck on and see how it acts with that. Now, rather than put a dial indicator on a chuck anywhere itself, I'm just gonna chuck up the drill bit and we'll jump straight to that. All righty, let's zero it and see what it looks like now. We always get a little bit of drag to start because probably not gonna be at zero. Nope. So we're going from about five to two to five to two. So we're sitting at about three thousandths. That is, and that's tremendously better. We were sitting at about 11 and a half, maybe almost 12 before. And we are now down to three thousandths. So that's, once again, that's pretty darn good for just a drill press. So as of right now, it looks like I'm probably going to keep this unless I find out that I got some other, other issue or it doesn't hold or something like that. But we'll keep, keep this on there and give it a shot. All right. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around. I really appreciate it. Hopefully today's quick little shop shorts video was helpful. If it was, and if you liked the video, please do me a favor and hit the thumbs up, then drop down, subscribe, and then hit the bell notification to be notified of upcoming videos. And as always, have a great rest of your day.